It is safe to continue our plans. As announced, this will occur for both Victoria and New South Wales, effective from midnight tonight. It's confirmed. WA is border to open in six hours. South Australia now the only state barred. We have live coverage with the Premier, Mark McGowan. Good afternoon. You're watching Nine News at Five. I'm Monica Koss. Also this hour, the home of the Claremont serial killer targeted by arsonists on his birthday. We hear from a survivor of that deadly charity ride crash on the freeway as we learn more about the woman killed. Police seize a record cash haul. This is what $13 million looks like. And an Australian first at Optus Stadium, how you can race like Perth-born legend Daniel Ricciardo. Breaking news to start this afternoon. A COVID scare is unfolding this hour on a ship docked in Perth. Jerry DeMassey, live from Quinana Port. Jerry, what can you tell us? Monica, very little at this stage. It's all just coming to hand. But what we can tell you is see that ship right behind me there that's docked, the Matsuyama. That is in lockdown because we can now confirm that a crew member had flu-like symptoms as of last night and are isolated on board. The other crew members are kept separate from that person, but the entire ship is in lockdown. No one is allowed to leave. We understand for a short period this afternoon also uh, several port workers here at the CBH Quinana Grain Terminal were also put into lockdown as a precaution uh, in the last about 20 minutes. We understand they've been allowed to leave, so it appears they've been given the all clear. But whoever is on that ship right now is still uh, under investigation. Now, uh, we know that that person will be tested and that results should come back by tomorrow morning or this afternoon, but again, all just precautionary. There's very little we know at this stage about just how big a threat this is, or if at all, Monica, but we will keep you updated with any information as it comes to hand. Thanks, Jerry. And it comes as Premier Mark McGowan has announced quarantine-free travel with Victoria and New South Wales will go ahead after a last-minute COVID scare threatened to derail reopening plans. Renee Henry, live from Perth Airport. A flurry of activity expected there tomorrow, Renee. It is, Mon, and this terminal, T1 Domestic, will reopen tomorrow. Just look at it now. It's dead, absolutely dead, and has been for several months now as Virgin hit tough times. Now the airline is slowly roaring back to life. But, yes, perhaps get the tissues ready. Lots of family reunions expected tomorrow. Hugs, kisses, and probably tears of relief because, as we know, WA was almost not going to reopen to New South Wales and Victoria after a Sydney hotel worker contracted COVID-19. But today, Premier Mark McGowan has said that he's pleased there's been no spread of the virus and the strain has been found to be an American strain rather than a local one. So he's satisfied it's safe for WA's border to come down with New South Wales and Victoria. That means no more mandatory quarantine for arrivals from there, but there are still some rules. Take a listen. Travellers must be prepared to take a COVID-19 test at the airport COVID clinic, if deemed necessary, by a health clinician. In addition, all land arrivals will be met at the border checkpoint for a health screening and to have their G2G pass declaration checked. As for South Australia, it's now reached nine days of no community transmission. The McGowan government says that means from midnight Thursday, exemption-free travel will be allowed from that state, but arrivals will still have to undergo the 14 days of mandatory self-isolation. Mon. Thanks, Renee. Renee Henry at Perth Airport there. Meantime, today has been labelled Freedom Day in New South Wales and Victoria as coronavirus restrictions wind back in both states. From today, there's no cap for people in public spaces, including hospitality venues, shopping centres and places of worship. It's the same for weddings and funerals, but the two square metre rule still applies. 50 people are allowed on dance floors and standing service is allowed in outdoor bars. Up to 100 people are allowed to gather outdoors, but indoors it's a 50 person limit in New South Wales and 30 in Victoria. And in Victoria, masks are still mandatory in shopping centres, on public transport and in taxis. The arson squad is investigating a fire this afternoon at the home of Claremont serial killer Bradley Robert Edwards. Louise Rennie is at the Qdale property. Lou, fire crews quickly got the blaze under control. Bizarrely, today is Edwards's birthday. 
Monica, he's turning 52 today behind bars at Kajarina Prison where he's awaiting sentencing for the murders of Jane Rimmer and Hira Glennon as well as two earlier sex attacks. As for the fire here at his Kudal house, it's believed some sort of accelerant was used around the site but it was out by the time firefighters arrived. Arson detectives are investigating this fire and at this stage it does appear to be deliberately lit. We spoke to neighbours today, this is what one of them told us. And they did a door to door to find out if anybody had CCTV because as far as we know they believe it to be suspicious that it's a possible arson attack. It was a bit concerning because that house is asbestos and if that had gone up we possibly all would have had to evacuate uh, and get out of here. Of course, this is where Bradley Edwards was living when he was dramatically arrested over the Claremont serial killings four years ago. Since then, the Acton Avenue house has remained empty. Meantime, our lawyers have spent today in court fighting for the re release of some very important exhibits, Bradley Edwards' police interview and video of his arrest. The footage shows how he reacted when police kicked down his door in December 2016. And Monica, I'll tell you more about that in Nine News tonight at six. Thanks, Lou. An update now on a weekend freeway tragedy, a charity ride ending in the death of a 39-year-old woman. Michael Stamp, we're learning more today about the woman who died in this terrible crash. Monica, the 39-year-old woman killed in yesterday's Christmas charity ride has been identified as wildlife advocate Katrina Reeve. She was one of more than a thousand riders taking part in the 45th annual event when she lost control of her Honda motorbike, hitting a wire rope barrier and flipping onto the train track. Katrina Reeve posted this video less than an hour before the crash, riding best day of the year, teddy bear day, so many bikes. Two other motorcycles tried to brake and avoid crashing into her Honda, but they couldn't stop in time. One of those was Joe Cole. The 59-year-old is recovering in Royal Perth Hospital with broken ribs and an injured shoulder. She slipped off her bike after hitting debris, which burst into flames. It's heart-wrenching, uh, you know, because it was supposed to be a fun, good day, and now somebody's missing a, a daughter or a wife. It's very, very important to make sure that you wear all the right gear. A 67-year-old man remains in a critical condition in Royal Perth Hospital while his 56-year-old passenger has been discharged from Joondalup Health Campus. Monica, in the news at six, a heartfelt tribute to Katrina Reeve. WA police are cracking down on overseas syndicates smuggling drugs into the state. New laws are in the pipeline to take down offshore kingpins after the latest cash seizure of $13 million. Well, this is what $13 million looks like. It's all been separated into 50s, 20s and 100s and in just this bag alone is about $100,000. Now this was all seized in Coolgardie on the 10th of November uh, in one of these trucks just behind me. I can't tell you where we are right now or where it's being kept but it does all have to be looked after by heavily armed officers like these ones just behind me. It's the single biggest cash seizure in Australia, part of a seven-week operation that saw almost 32 million drug dollars intercepted around the state. The money on the table here would have bought and recycled millions and millions of doses, predominantly of methamphetamine. Since COVID-19 sent our borders into lockdown, we've seen WA's meth consumption halve. We know that this Mr Big sitting offshore, we're going to bring in a range of radical laws to target people who are offshore purveying this poison to our families and children in Western Australia. This is all linked to about half a dozen outlaw motorcycle gangs so far. About a dozen people have been charged, uh, but police are promising more charges to come. A professional gambler turned bookie has told the Corruption and Crime Commission about his dealings with WA's most dishonest public servant. Graham Mitchell placed millions of dollars worth of bets for disgraced housing boss Paul White and benefited from a Pilbara land deal worth $1.3 million. But he says the relationship broke down in 2015 when Mr White left him holding gambling debt of about $300,000. I think a lot of people, you know, would be feeling this way. I mean, my, my question is, how in the hell... The Triple C is examining whether the land deal brokered by Mr White was corrupt. 
Casual workers would have to be offered permanent jobs after a year of regular work under new rules planned by the Morrison government. But after months of negotiations with businesses and unions, the Industrial Relations Bill has been attacked for leaving workers worse off. It allows employers just to whack a label on you and call you a casual when you're not and you lose all your entitlements. The government believes it will win support in the Senate and it hopes the unions are not as deeply opposed as they might seem. Donald Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, has potentially exposed hundreds of people to COVID-19 after testing positive to the virus. Here's US correspondent Amelia Adams with the latest details. In the week since the election, we've seen Rudy Giuliani really travelling the country, filing lawsuits in various key states, contesting Joe Biden's victory, including a couple of days ago, these pictures you're seeing now, Giuliani in Georgia attending a Senate hearing. He was hugging supporters, not wearing a mask. And then just this morning on breakfast television. This was a pattern that was set by somebody in Washington because everybody else carried it out exactly in the same way. And they did it in the crooked cities. Within hours of that interview, we learned the president's personal attorney is now fighting something else, and that is the coronavirus, which has infected more than 14 and a half million Americans and claimed 280,000 American lives. Donald Trump tweeting Rudy Giuliani, by far the greatest mayor in the history of New York City, who has been working tirelessly, exposing the most corrupt election by far in the history of the USA has tested positive for the China virus. Get better soon, Rudy. We will carry on vowing to continue fighting this election result. The problem is the deadline for all of those recounts and any court contests regarding the presidential election to be resolved is now just two days away. So President Trump fast running out of time and now he's a man down. The first batches of the Pfizer vaccine have arrived at hospitals in London ahead of tomorrow's rollout across the UK. Those over 80 aged care workers and vulnerable health care workers will be first in line to receive the jab. Well, throughout the UK, around 50 hospitals are now busy unpacking and storing their batches of the Pfizer vaccine in minus 70 degree conditions, preparing for the first vaccinations, which will begin on Tuesday. Now, anyone aged over 80 will be the first to get the jab, along with aged care workers and vulnerable hospital staff. The Queen is 94, Prince Philip is 99, so British media are reporting that they may be among the first to get the jab. And the Queen may then make that public knowledge to allow concerns about the vaccine. If that happened, it certainly wouldn't be the first time. In 1957, the Queen broke protocol to announce publicly that Prince Charles and Princess Anne, as children, received the polio vaccine. That allayed concerns back then. Returning home and a western suburbs driver accused of destroying a $70,000 speed camera has faced court today. Police say Philip Rogers smashed the device into a tree several times after it flashed him on Stirling Highway. The 38-year-old is now charged with criminal damage. If you fancy yourself a bit of a rev head, you might want to head to Optus Stadium, the ultimate go-kart track's being created there. The vehicle's the brainchild of Perth-born Formula One Grand Prix champion Daniel Ricciardo. Well, get ready to go, go, go. From Friday, you'll be able to take these little beauties around up the stadium for a spin. The pop-up go-kart event will see these Daniel Ricciardo designed carts hurtling around a custom-made track with the stadium in the background. And when you look at the facilities around here, a lot of it's not used for many parts of the year, so just to have that uh, opportunity uh, to have something different. The track, 730 metres long, starting just outside the train station, taking drivers under both platforms and through tunnels under the Victoria Park Drive underpass. It's going to feel very quick in an environment like here. We've got barriers around you and then fencing. It's going to feel like a small F1 track. It's part of a program that we've been developing over a while to bring more events to the stadium itself and to the stadium precinct. The track also includes a 150 metre straight, allowing drivers to reach speeds of up to 60 k's an hour. The cart's suitable for all ages and abilities. Anyone over 110 centimetres can be a passenger. You need to be over 140 centimetres to drive. The pop-up go-karts will run seven days a week until the end of February. How much are tickets? I'll have those details at six. Looking good in a suit too. We've had a good dose of summer today. Shirley Biggs is live from Duncraig for us this afternoon. Feeling pretty warm outside. How hot was it today? 
Well, Mon, this is just the beginning to a run of hot days. We had some hot easterly winds coming through that brought the mercury up to 33 degrees in the city just before 4 o'clock this afternoon. The warmest spot, though, was Bullsbrook at almost 34 degrees. Now, we do have a very balmy evening ahead, which is perfect weather to go on the hunt for the best Christmas lights in Perth. And that's brought us here to Sampson Court in Duncraig, a firm favourite on the Synergy Christmas Lights Trail. And I have one of the uh, homeowners here with me, Alan and Tuktar Bennett. Now, Alan, how did this all begin? Uh, we used to do a few lights in the street and then one day the young lad who lived next door sent a letter around and said, why don't we all do lights? So the whole street's got behind it and we've ended up where we are at this moment now with... And we built it here on it, of course. So. And it's just exploded over the last few years. But you guys have been raising money uh, for a very important cause. Yes, we raise the money for wheelchairs for kids. Uh, they're a volunteer group up in Wangara and they make all the wheelchairs and distributed free throughout the world for underprivileged children. So. Well, congratulations. You guys are doing a great job. Over $70,000. Now, if you want to vote for this street, all you have to do is head to lightstrail.com.au. But, Mon, I will have some more weather details coming up for you. And I'll also, at 6 o'clock, be showing off these lights after dark. So I'll see you, see you a little later in the bulletin. We'll see you then. Thanks, Sherry. Paddy Sweeney's here now with a look at today's sport. And Paddy, the Eagles captain, back at training early than expected. A slight surprise, Monica, and Luke Shuey was drafted by the club way back in 2008, but that hasn't stopped him showing the way this pre-season. A 30-year-old on the track with first to four-year players at Lath Lane this morning. It sets a great example for all players, including new recruits like former giant Zach Langdon. Yeah, to see the captain down there, it's pretty, pretty inspiring. And, um, yeah, I just want to put my best foot forward and, um, you know, show him that I really want to place in this team as well. And the Dockers are also back on the training track. Greater endurance and speed are the two things front of mind for emerging star Caleb Sarong after his debut season resulted in winning the Rising Star Award. Weight-wise, I'm kind of where I want to be or um, maybe potentially dropping a kilo or two, but it's, it's not a big focus in terms of that weight. It's more just kind of getting leaner and fitter. And Paddy Cameron Green has sent a message to selectors. A clear one as well, Monica. The WA young gun is banging down the door, chasing his test debut. The 21-year-old smashing an unbeaten 114 against the Indians in their tour match in Sydney. The all-rounder hitting 10 fours and a six, combining with test captain Tim Payne for a 104 run partnership. What stands out is that temperament and composure, and he just seems like he belongs. So obviously, he's an outrageous talent with the ball as well. So I think it's, it's pretty exciting to see what he brings to the table. It's very exciting indeed, and more on that race for a spot in the first test coming up tonight at 6 we'll see months. you then. Thanks, Thank Paddy. You. Shock details of a horrific crime coming up next. A man accused of killing a woman he'd never met. Italy underwater as devastating floods force mass evacuations. And an explosive blaze in Russia sends thousands of fireworks skywards. The Gold Coast. It's where Australia goes to play. But if you party too hard... Anything can happen at any time. You're going to get caught. Oh, a bit short of Monday, we're like laundry day. This is your final warning. Community. Protected and served. New Gold Coast Cops. Tonight, 7.30 on 9. Sometimes, even the best tenants can cause damage to your investment property that standard building insurance may not cover. Uh -oh. Terry Shear, Australia's leading landlord insurance specialist, provides the cover you need for your property and rental income. Have confidence that your investment property is in safe hands. As a first-time investor, Terry Shear provides the security I need. Call Terry Shear or go online. Since 2014, together with Oz Harvest, Woolworths has provided over 34 million meals to Aussies in need. And with your help, we want to provide 6 million more. Sharing the spirit of Christmas. Woolworths. Make sure your tyres are safe these holidays. No gimmicks, no tricks, no charge. Get your tyres checked by the experts. At Bob Jane t -Marts, we'll look after you. Finally. Ugh. The way I see it, you've got two options in life. Settle for what you're given or speak up for what you deserve. Cricket. <laughs> got him. Winter is coming. See ya. Show me DiCaprio movies. You said it, Leo. Foxtel. Now with voice control.
Before you choose the bench tops and basins and the doors and the floors, think about the frame. House frames made with the inner strength of true core steel won't shrink, twist or warp over time. To find builders using true core steel, visit truecore.com.au. Warning, do you have a will, inheritance or court issue? Talk to specialist lawyers Friedman, Lurie, Singh and D'Angelo or you could lose out big time. Get the results you deserve. Google Friedman, Lurie, Singh and D'Angelo now. That's Friedman, Lurie, Singh and D'Angelo. Your dad wants me to download a playlist. Nothing's fine until oh. I'm all out of faith. You and me, God. This is how I feel. Look around as the favourites come out. It begins. Observing with an eagle eye. Mastering the art of stashing. Oh, brilliant Irv Grant. Cadbury favourites. Everyone gets their favourites. Gift yourself more time this Christmas. Shop online with Woolworths Direct to Boot. Helping you share the spirit of Christmas. Woolworths. Had enough of city living? I need space. Join Katrina Roundtree as she searches for your perfect rural property. The epitome of country life. From a home among the gums. Definitely got the wow factor. To the ultimate country lifestyle. It's amazing. Country House Hunters, Friday 7.30 on 9. All you want for Christmas is in the city. City of Perth and Nine News are giving you the chance to win a share of $10,000 worth of city experiences, including shopping, dining and entertainment. To make your Christmas wish come true, simply watch Nine News nightly at 6, look for the code word and then enter online. There's a winner drawn every night. All you want for Christmas. Thanks to Nine News and the City of Perth, the home of Christmas. A man who stabbed a woman he'd never met 58 times after breaking into her home has pleaded not guilty to murder by reason of insanity. Tegan Sapwell, Jesse Dubow claims he has no memory of killing Cara Hales. Monica, this is such a tragic case. Today, the final terrifying moments of Cara Hale's life were revealed as the man stood trial, accused of her murder. Now, her family members were in tears as the court heard how Cara Hales called her flatmate after realising somebody had broken into her home. The flatmate forced to listen on helplessly as she screamed for her life. Jesse Dubow had taken a large knife from the kitchen as he stabbed 30-year-old Cara Hales 48 times. He then showered and, leaving his clothes and shoes behind, walked naked to Coburn Cement where he, where he was arrested in a toilet cubicle. Dubow, now 25, claims he was in a psychosis. He says he has no memory of the killing or of being in Cara Hale's house. Prosecutors say the evidence will show he was insane at the time. He'd been released from Greylands a day earlier where he says he was taken after being hit by a car while in a drug-induced psychosis. Today, a phone call he made to his father the day after the killing was planned to the court. Take a listen. They're saying I did something I, I can't remember. I don't think I would ever do something like this. Now, this afternoon, Jesse Dubow's police interview was also played to the court. We'll have more on what he said tonight at 6. Tegan, thank you. To Italy and pictures now of a major rescue operation as the country's north received, recovers from extreme weather causing major flooding. Hundreds of people in the city of Medina are evacuated and roads cut off. Authorities warning there's danger of landslides and avalanches. The wild weather reaching as far as Croatia with waves as high as six metres hitting small towns along its coast. Flames have ripped through a fireworks factory in Russia as more than 400 firefighters battled the blaze. Rapid fire explosions hampered their efforts. The blaze took hold for several hours with the cause of the inferno now under investigation. Despite lengthy discussions into the night, UK and European leaders are today unable to come to an agreement on a post-Brexit trade deal. In a statement, leaders revealing talks stalled over three critical issues, fishing rights, competition rules and how the deal will be enforced. Both parties underlying that no agreement is feasible if the issues aren't resolved. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are climbing aboard the Royal Train for a three-day tour across England, Scotland and Wales. The couple paying tribute to frontline staff and community workers for their support during the pandemic. It's believed to be Kate's first time travelling on the train after getting special permission from the Queen. 
Let's see what's happening in the news at six with Michael Thompson live from the Nine Newsroom this hour. Monica, thank you. And we've got uh, a story which is an exclusive to Channel 9. It's about the nurses. They are extremely concerned about the violence that's now occurring. We had an attack in just recent times in an intensive care unit. The nurses say they have had enough. They have had a meeting with the health minister today and we can give you the response from the health minister. Plus also, we'll also hear from the nurses themselves. And they say really it's got to a crisis point and something needs to happen. That at six. And Michael, it has been a big day for the Claremont serial killer. Well, it's his birthday today, Mon, uh, but also someone set fire to the house that he used to live in in Cuda. We'll give you details about that. But this also happens uh, as we now prepare to hear uh, what will happen as far as Bradley Robert Edwards is concerned with his sentencing. That's on December 23. But also in court, there is a very strong move. Channel 9 is taking action to try and show the public of Western Australia the, the, the vision that the police took of the arrest of him. Uh, and it is, we have have been able to see it, our reporters in the courtroom, but the public is yet to see it. We'll give you an update on that as well. Until then, that's Nine News at Six with Michael Thompson. How we're handling the new QR code check-in system that's next on the pulse calls this afternoon for our national anthem to be sung in a local Indigenous language at Australian sporting events and how you can score 60 years worth of free pizza. Your COVID vaccine questions. What are the long-term effects? What adverse reactions can be expected? A current affair tonight. This Christmas, show them you know them with meaningful gifts from Officeworks. Like the Lenovo IdeaPad Duet 2-in-1, a low $497. Or young stacking chairs, just $20 each. And this Lenovo 27-inch Full HD monitor is a smooth operator at only $268. Plus, it's all backed by our 5% price beat guarantee. Officeworks, helping you make bigger things happen. This Christmas, share succulent, award-winning Woolworths Half-Leg Ham. 100% Australian pork, now just $9 a kilo. Helping you share the spirit of Christmas. Woolworths. Perfect Italiano is perfect for that. And Perfect Italiano is perfect for that. Um, not so good for that. But for a delicious meal every time, Perfect Italiano is perfect for that. Witches. They're real. And they hate children. Ah! Grandma, is that you, boy? She's gonna turn every kid into a mouse. Exterminate those brats. Uh, rats. So, what do you want for Christmas? Uh, uh, um... Ben here is a bumbling boyfriend, otherwise known as a tricky one. Get them a Lottery West gift pack this Christmas. Hi, can I get two Big Mac meals, please? And would you like $10,000 with that? Spend $10 for your chance to win $10,000 at Maccas, with 10 winners every day throughout December. Healthy skin starts with new Cetaphil Face with Hyaluronic Acid. It helps protect the health of sensitive skin with cleansers and moisturisers that give gentle, effective daily care. Healthy skin starts with Cetaphil. If your credit card debt is keeping you up at night, move your balance to a NAB low-rate card and save on interest with 0% per annum on balance transfers for 20 months so you can get your finances and your sleep back on track. NAB. More than money. I'm going to get you, you beautiful, shiny. Oh, you've gone. Come here and reveal yourself, my most precious. Oh, you've gone. Any second now, I'll have you in my... <laughs> Whiskers. Feed their curiosity. Since 2014, together with Oz Harvest, Woolworths has provided over 34 million meals to Aussies in need. And with your help, we want to provide 6 million more. Sharing the spirit of Christmas. Woolworths. She's the hotshot surgeon. There are four doctors in the world who know how to do this. I'll be five. Operating to her own beat. Melissa George and Don Haney. My patient doesn't have time to wait. Addictive new drama. Heartbeat. Nine now. Your world of free entertainment.
Hello, Cresty here. We do expect big delays thanks to the earlier broken down track on Quinana Freeway southbound at South Terrace, blocking up the right lane. Traffic management on site, traffic heavy back to Vincent Street. Perhaps use Graham Farmer Freeway instead. Our AC Insurance see what you see because they're local too. Join CanStar's 2020 most satisfied car insurance customers in WA. Get a quote at rac.com.au. More traffic soon. Welcome back. It's 31 degrees in Perth right now. You're watching Nine News at Five. It's good to have you with us. Reports of problems with the QR code rollout at WA's public venues this afternoon with people saying they're being encouraged to scan a different code at some businesses, not the state government mandated one. Let's take this to the pulse with brand consultant Sharon Atwood and media stables Nick Hayes. Good afternoon, guys. Sharon, we'll start with you. Okay. Uh, the suggestion is that these businesses are getting hold of your private details to use for their own purposes. Now, how concerning is that? I think it's a real concern. I think that we saw this before the government app came out. There were businesses that were kind of, you know, don't write it down, just scan here, and then all of a sudden you find yourself giving them all of your details. So I think it's a concern now that they're leveraging off a genuine government initiative to kind of just build their database. Nick, so what's I, your take yeah. on this? Oh, look, uh, yeah, I, I don't like any business collecting it when you don't even know that it's being collected. But, uh, look, it's the app that is going to keep our shops and keep our, uh, our business moving. So you, you want to you wanna be a part of it and, and hope that they're using it for the right purposes. I'm all for it, as long as we can uh, still get, you know, out and about. And you've got to win the trust of the public to use it yeah. as well. Mm. Now, there are calls for the national anthem to be sung in a local Indigenous language at all Australian sporting events. It comes after 17-year-old Olivia Fox made history for her rendition at the Wallabies game over the weekend. Take a listen. <laughs> Nick, she's done a wonderful job there. What do you make of the move? I love it. I love it. I love it because I love the way the Kiwis do it. They do it better than anyone else does, and now we're following that lead. It's something that we should recognise. I want to see more of it. The only problem I have, though, Mon, is that there's 300 Aboriginal languages. Uh, do we keep changing it around every single time? But, look, I love the movement. It's something that's quite healing. Sharon, about time this happened, do you think? I think it's about time we had a look at it. I think it's a starting point. I think that maybe the National Anthem, as, as a part of this, needs to have a bit of a refresh. Um, but I think definitely, you know, going with, with local Indigenous languages um, at these sorts of events is a great start. Mm, some would say long overdue. And finally, mm. we all love pizza, uh, but how about <laughs> winning 60 years worth of free pizza? Domino's is celebrating its 60th anniversary. It's giving away the prize to anyone whose baby is born on December 9, 2020, and given the name of Dominic or Dominique. Sharon, that's about 720 <laughs> nights of no cooking dinner. Got to love that. Oh, you would. And I think, you know, with your, your new baby in the house, I think, yeah, that'd sway a lot of people. So, I mean, someone will do this. 100% someone will name. Someone will have twins and a boy and a girl and name them Dom and Dominique. It's going to happen and I can't wait to see that. And perhaps even the gentleman sitting next to you. Nick, are you just renaming your child as we speak? No, I'm not renaming my kids. My kids, are, they'd be shattered if poor old little Bunnings and Coca-Cola out there. I, my poor kids have already got a shocking name already. No, look, it's a great little marketing tool from uh, from uh, uh, Domino's. Look, at the, they've got us talking about it. Yeah. They're, they're, they're smart and and uh, 60 years worth of pizza, jeepers, give them a Weight Watchers uh, membership <laughs> as well alongside it. They may be needing it. It's been thoroughly enjoyable. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank Mike. You. We are with the Premier next. Mark McGowan, live from Rockingham on the border reopening. What it means for West Aussies. Then we are taking goal setting with our nine psychologist. Why, she says, now is the right time. And later, a frequent flyer battle takes to Australian skies. The race. Come on, let's run. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Is. Don't cry because you get weak. On. Nice but what's the major slip up? No. That crashes one team. I'm going to cry. Out of the competition. I'm out of the race. End of. Race across the world. Thursday, 8.30 on 9. Taste the new rice range from Rolls. Dinner adventures minus the plane ticket. Get yours delivered today. Only a rolled. Rice here, rice now. Christmas is a really magical time of year. Matador Portable Barbecue, only $119. Barbecue tool set, just $13.15. Where you find a competitor's lower price on the same stocked item, you'll beat it by 10%. Bring home a little magic this Christmas.
I'd like a bar of chocolate, please. Happy birthday, Mum. There's a glass and a half in everyone. The capable Havel H9. A globally engineered, European designed and feature packed seven seat four wheel drive. From just 41,990 drive away. Havel H9. New car thinking. At Morris Mead, we celebrate Christmas by sharing the love. The magic for me is sitting around the Christmas tree and seeing my children's faces light up. However you share the love this Christmas, find the perfect gift at Morris Mead. Carol, I am a super intelligence. I'm trying to determine if I should destroy the planet. I'm going to find out who you are. People are worth saving. Bow before your digital overlord. He's actually turning it. That's hilarious. Under pressure. It might look the same, but we've improved Australia's most popular retractable hose reel. With smooth and durable retraction, it's great for any sized garden. Available at Bunnings Warehouse. At Coles, we're helping lower the cost of easy desserts with a Coles Classic Pavlova. Down, down to just $5.70. Perfect with Coles Aussie Thick and Cream, just $3. Coles, value the Australian way. Try retinol but worried it'll irritate your skin? Try Olay's new Retinol Night Moisturiser from Chemist Warehouse. The formula uses a gentler type of bioavailable retinoid that penetrates deep into the skin. It renews and resurfaces skin with 24-hour hydration so you can wake up to plumper, younger-looking skin. Olay Retinol Night Moisturiser is $29.99 at Chemist Warehouse. Pair with Olay Retinol 24 Eye Cream. Live, look, feel fabulous every day at Chemist Warehouse. Detective Banks is back. Where were you really that night? To uncover every killer secret. DCI Banks, tonight on Night Jam. It's 4.36 in Perth and you're watching Nine News at 5. Let's check latest headlines now. The Kewdale home of Claremont serial killer Bradley Robert Edwards has been the target of arsonists. Police have made another cash haul, seizing $32 million in drug money during state patrols. And Donald Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, has potentially exposed hundreds to COVID-19 after testing positive to the virus. We've heard this afternoon our borders will reopen as planned to New South Wales and Victoria from midnight. We are pleased to welcome Premier Mark McGowan to Nine News at Five. Premier, thanks for joining us today. Before we get to our border, can you just update us on the COVID scare on a ship off Quinana Port this afternoon? Uh, thanks, Monica. Uh, there's been one crew member uh, who's had COVID-like symptoms on board this grain carrier that's uh, alongside at CBH Terminal uh, here in Rockingham. Uh, so we're currently uh, testing the person and working out whether or not they're COVID positive and obviously we'll have to work out what to do from there. Uh, over the course of the last year we've had lots of these situations. Uh, we've uh, isolated the uh, ship, the crew doesn't have contact with our people on the uh, wharf, uh, so we're confident the situation is in hand. OK. As for the border decision, how close did you come to not opening them? Well, all, all depended upon the health advice and what happened in uh, New South Wales. So uh, we're, uh, we've had now, uh, what is it, four or five days of testing in New South Wales after this issue arose. Uh, there's been no positive cases out of all of that testing. Uh, the health advice says we could open to New South Wales, but we keep the control border in place. People still get health screened. Uh, and if we have any concerns at all, uh, subject to medical advice, we can put the hard border up again in the future. South Australians will be allowed into WA from Thursday as long as they quarantine. When will you reassess that situation? Well, from the 11th of December, South Australians will be able to come in, quarantine and be tested. Uh, but uh, if, um, 
if South Australia does 28 days of no community spread, uh, then we can look to uh, bring down the hard border with uh, South Australia. So uh, that all depends upon how South Australia goes. They've now done, I think it's eight or ten days without any uh, community spread of the virus. So uh, we'll watch South Australia closely, as we do all the states, because we're very cautious and we uh, take a very precautionary approach on all of this. And we have the capacity with the control border uh, to put up the hard border again in an instant. On a different matter, Premier, the price of iron ore has hit a new seven-year record at $145 a tonne. It's adding billions to the state budget. Can families and seniors expect any relief to household fees and charges? Well, we already provided families with a $600 uh, credit on people's household bills because we settled the Bell case, which allowed us to do that. So that's $600 off people's electricity bills. Uh, and we already yesterday allocated $1.8 billion of our surplus towards a special account to build a new women's and babies hospital. Uh, we kept uh, fees and charges down over our term in office to uh, uh, less than half the rate uh, that the last government had in their first term in office. Uh, but obviously we'll keep an eye on fees and charges. We know cost of living is a big issue for families across the state. Indeed, affecting everyone very quickly. Premier, you've suggested a COVID-19 vaccine could be compulsory for WA school children. How do you encourage parents to get their kids vaccinated, to trust that it's safe? Are you prepared to get the jab yourself on television, as three former US presidents intend to do? Yeah, well, of course, of course I'll have the, uh, the uh, vaccine when I'm eligible to get it. Uh, the first group of people to get it will be the elderly and the uh, immunocompromised and then healthcare workers and all that sort of thing. Uh, but I'd be prepared to get the, the, uh, virus, on television? the uh, jab, of course. On television? Oh, whatever, yeah. Oh, I don't... I don't mind having it on television. I'm not, I'm not afraid of needles. Premier, um, we look forward to having you on the 5pm news desk to have the jab right here with us. <laughs> but, of course, we're not, we're not making it compulsory for people. We're looking at ways to encourage people to do it. So whether or not saying to people, if you want to tra travel overseas, you'll need to have it, those sorts of initiatives we're looking uh, at uh, as a national cabinet, all the states are looking at that. Premier, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Monica. In scenes reminiscent of Waxit, there's unrest brewing in Victoria today with Rexit. A Liberal MP wants regional Victorians to break away from Melbourne and become part of a new super state. It acts like a giant black hole which sucks resources and people out of the regions into Melbourne. Um, and decisions that are made are made in the interests of people in Melbourne. The MP will begin campaigning next week in the hope of gaining enough support to hold a referendum in the next five years. We're nearing the end of a year most of us would rather forget, which makes it the perfect time to set some goals for the future. Well, that's according to our next guest, psychologist Dr Marnie Lishman. Welcome, Dr Lishman. Hi, Monica. What is goal setting? Why is it important? Oh, well, it's, it's a plan of action. So it's a strategy we put in place to improve certain areas of our lives. So it could be anything from our health, so our psychological health we want to get better, or our physical health. It might be something to do with our nutrition. Um, a lot of us want to have more money next year. So often it's us looking forward to the future and having a think about what we want to achieve to actually improve our life and it is so important because if we don't have give our brain a direction to go to we're just floundering and we slip back into those well-worn habits that aren't particularly helpful no. <laughs> to some of our lives. But some people might groan at the thought of goal setting. Oh. You say it's not that hard. Oh gosh yeah I think most people do groan and that's because they their goals haven't worked in the past and I think we all know that where we've been so excited about our New Year's resolutions and then by the end of January we've gone back to the things that we did before and we've kind of given up. So I think yeah it is quite easy if you know how to do it and I think what a lot of people do is they get too excited and they set really massive goals that they can't achieve. They're either really vague or there's too many that they're trying to attempt at once. Um, sometimes the goals that people try and action are ones that their wife has set or their husband or someone else so it's not actually the goal and we know that whenever people want us to change we often don't do it so that never helps um, and the other problem with a lot of goal setting is that the, the day that we muck up the next day sometimes we completely give up and we'll wait another year to reset the goal but relapses and going back to well-worn habits is often a thing that we normally do so it's about not giving up as well. Okay so along with not having too many goals and using yes. somebody else's goals what else yeah. do we need to know in order to create goals that we actually have a chance of achieving? Yeah yeah I, I would say start evaluating 2020 now start having a think about all the things that you 
you that worked this year and what didn't and what you want to do in 2021 to kind of up level in your life there might be multiple things so pick one so prioritize them but pick the one that excites you first and break it down into small actionable steps and then just start doing it very very slowly and make sure it's measurable make sure it's timely and make sure that you have the right support and always anticipate the roadblocks so the little things that might creep up that might make you go back to those old habits that aren't helpful and I think that is the way to do it but always get excited and pick the one that excites you the most it's and something that you're not don't start depriving yourself of things add things that are going to benefit your life and get you excited start and to start off that way and become really confident straight away so taking small steps Dr Lishman thank sure. you very much for your time thank you as we move closer to a cashless society what are our legal rights when it comes to paying with legal tender at shops and restaurants we are live with lawyer John Hammond next Australia's Olympic bid back on track and a rare health check for a Perth Zoo favourite. Look out Australia, here come the learners. Whoa, sorry. Oh my God. In the nail biting series, get in the driver's seat of real driving tests. Come on, what are you doing? Who will pass and who will fail? What happened next? Oh. New driving test, tonight at 8 on 9. Taste the new rice range from Rolls. Dinner adventures minus the plane ticket. Get yours delivered today. Only a Rolls. Rice here, rice now. If you have unsightly kitchen cupboards and drawers, we have a large variety of storage options in all shapes and sizes at hard to beat prices. Win 4K before Christmas by merely signing up at reddot.com.au. Red Dot is now your place for storage. WA Pool Warehouse biggest ever sale is on now, up to 40% off. Warehouse prices on pool pumps from $3.29 and the power saving Davy Eco. Chlorinators from $8.49, pool cleaners from $2.99 and sand filters from $3.99. Plus the WA Pool Warehouse price guarantee means you'll always get the cheapest price on a stocked item. Plus we have speciality chemicals and free in-store professional water testing. WA Pool Warehouse, stores all over Perth or wapoolwarehouse.com.au. On now at Harvey Norman, save a massive $210 off the Dyson V7 Motorhead Cordless Vac. Now just $379. Get a new Samsung French door fridge from just $1,296. And save an incredible $1,000 off this Samsung 75-inch 4K QLED TV. Now $1,887. Plus, get 60 months interest-free with a bonus gift card up to $500. More great deals at Harvey Norman now. Today we'll be offering... They're gone. What do you mean they're gone? The snacks. They're gone. Missing. Well, they have to be here somewhere. They're not here. They can't just get up and walk away. All right. Only 13 more hours to go. New M&M's pretzel with pretzel inside. At Coles, we're helping lower the cost of easy desserts with a Coles Classic Pavlova. Down, down to just $5.70. Perfect with Coles Aussie Thick and Cream. Just $3. Coles. Value the Australian way. Out there in the universe, stars are born all the time. But not many of them shine as bright as this multi-award winner. Western star, more than butter. Hamish Blake, Carly Minogue, Shepard, Olivia Newton-John, Hugh Sheridan, Montaigne, Robbie Williams and Kelly Rowland. Celebrate Christmas with Delta, Saturday 7.30 on 9. Hello, Christy here taking a final check. Well, good news, the earlier broken down truck on Quinana Freeway South and just at South Terrace has cleared, so all lanes are back open. Traffic's still heavy, back to Vincent Street, the freeway north van off and on from the city up to Reed. RAC Insurance, see what you see because they're local too. Join CanStar's 2020 Most Satisfied Car Insurance customers in WA. Get a quote at rac.com.au. More traffic tomorrow. 
We have an update now on a catastrophic bushfire continuing to devastate Fraser Island with residents there told to evacuate today. Authorities launching a major aerial assault in an attempt to bring the blaze under control. The tiny township of Happy Valley under threat. Um, it's hard to see. We've got three fronts approaching on us. One's coming screaming down the beach at us. Burning for seven weeks, the bushfire has now chewed through 82,000 hectares, killing wildlife and decimating the World Heritage listed park. Queensland's bid to host the 2032 Olympic Games is today back in the spotlight after discussions were temporarily put on hold due to the pandemic. COVID-19 has put a hold on many things this year, including Queensland's 2032 bid for the Olympic Games. But Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk and Australian Olympic Committee President John Coates uh, met this morning for the first time here in Brisbane since March to get the state's bid back on track. Part of that renewed bid will be selling Queensland's successful track record in containing coronavirus, being the first city in the world to fill a stadium during the pandemic and literally saving the AFL season. Uh, we've had a, once again, a really positive discussion about uh, the possibility of a future Olympics here in Queensland for 2032. I think with uh, COVID under control uh, in this country largely that um, it was time um, or is time for everyone to reaffirm their commitment to these games and I think that's going to be very well received. A feasibility study done earlier this year found a successful bid would be cost neutral thanks to the IOC helping fund the games, generating roughly 130,000 jobs through infrastructure and a boost to tourism. Queensland is competing with Indonesia, India, Netherlands and the Germany among others for the 2032 slot. The Premier will meet with Prime Minister Scott Morrison at National Cabinet on Friday to reaffirm the Federal government's commitment to the 2032 bids. A unique view of Earth has been captured as astronauts aboard the International Space Station performed maintenance work outside their laboratory. It's in anticipation of the arrival of the latest SpaceX capsule, which is set to deliver extra supplies and cargo to the team. It's due to arrive tomorrow afternoon. Perth Zoo's 33-year-old Sumatran orangutan has been given a rare health check after he was found to be feeling out of sorts. Danar wasn't responding to normal medication, so was put to sleep to be transported to the wildlife hospital. The 96-kilo primate had a mild case of sinusitis and was given a course of antibiotics. He's now back out swinging in his jungle house. The future of cash has long been in question. Will it disappear, become obsolete? Now, due to the COVID pandemic, it's being phased out quicker than most expected. But what are our legal rights during this transition? Let's bring in lawyer John Hammond. John, we're seeing no cash signs pop up in pubs, restaurants, shops. Is it legal to refuse legal tender? Monica, yes it is. Um, a shop can dictate whether it accepts cash or credit card and providing they tell the customer it's no cash, just credit card, that's perfectly legitimate. Well, what if there isn't any signage? Cash can still be refused as long as they tell them? Uh, potentially, yes. So uh, the practical side of it is that people would need to complain to the Department of Commerce. By the time that happens, you know, it's just too inconvenient. So yes, a shop can refuse cash. Well, cash is very popular with seniors in particular. How do we go about using it if it's all we have? Or, or do we just have to put the milk and the bread back on the shelf? I mean, how do we have that conversation? It all has to go back on the shelf, Monica, unfortunately, because if the shop dictates that's what they'll receive, they're entitled to do that. It was only the other night that I was being roundly criticised for having a wallet. Uh, as being really old-fashioned that I would carry a wallet with cash. What's the point of keeping it legal tender then? Well, none probably in today's society. Most people are using their Apple smartphones uh, or their Samsung phones and that's how they're paying. Nine Woolworth stores over east have already moved to a totally cashless system. Is this the start of the end of cash altogether, do you think, then? Yeah, I think it is. I think within a matter of four to five years, there will be no cash and everything will be done electronically. John, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. It'll be interesting moving ahead there in a cashless society. Thanks for yeah, joining us. Thank you. We will see what's making headlines on Nine tonight at six with Michael Thompson next. Plus, is this the start of a frequent flyer war? Virgin launches its counter-attack. We'll tell you what it's offering. Then Sherry Lee Biggs is live with the weather from Duncraig. 
Thanks, Mon. Well, we've got a heat spell hitting Perth. We should be nearing 40 degrees tomorrow, maybe a roll of thunder in the afternoon. But together with Dancer, Prancer and Vixen here, I'll have your weather details coming up soon. Imagine living next door to this. Australia's charity bin mess. Families forced to live with dumped rubbish in their street. A current affair tonight. Taste the new rice range from Rolls. Dinner adventures minus the plane ticket. Get yours delivered today. Only a Rolls. Rice here, rice now. The stylish Havel H2. A globally engineered, European designed and feature packed SUV. From just 22,990 drive away. Havel H2 Auto. New car thinking. Oh, you're just getting mangoes. <laughs> Find all your Christmas specials like Country Chef Pavlova 500 grams, six dollars each, and Kleenex Beaver Paper Towel two pack varieties, one seventy five, half price. Now at your local ITA. This seems easy enough. Getting a loan can be complicated. Nimble makes finance faster. Get a Nimble personal loan up to $25,000 from 8.99%. Comparison rate from 10.31% per annum. Visit nimble.com.au. The land we live on is unique. And for over 60,000 years, its first peoples have developed an understanding of the six changing seasons that affect it. Right now, we are in Birak season. A time when the rains ease, the weather warms and the afternoons are cooled by sea breezes. For Noongar people, this was the fire season. A time to burn, to reduce fuel loads, to create grazing pastures and to promote germination. A time to encourage life and create safe spaces. Climate change directly affects the availability of water and we all have a role to play to protect it and to adapt the way we use it. Especially during Birak, when the weather is hot and dry, to help us all thrive on this land, we must learn from those who know it best. This message is proudly brought to you by Water Corporation. Think climate change, be water wise. Welcome back. You're watching Nine News at Five. Let's bring in Michael Thompson now for a look at what's in the news at six. Thanks, Monica. Tonight on Nine News, the Premier says that bringing down the border is safe as we get breaking news on the ship in lockdown off Quinana. Plus, nurses sounding the alarm on violence crisis in our hospitals after a vicious assault. The tragic final message from a freeway crash victim killed on a charity ride. And the price of fruit and veg about to soar. We'll tell you why. That's Nine News at 6, coming up in just a moment. Right? Thank you, Michael. See you then. Online retailer Kogan has been hit with a $350,000 fine by the federal court for misleading customers during a tax time sales promotion in 2018. Kogan was found to have increased the price of more than 600 products immediately before offering a 10% discount on them. Credit card debt is on the decline, with new figures showing it's fallen below $20 billion for the first time in almost 16 years. Data from the Reserve Bank reveals in the past 12 months, Australians have managed to wipe almost $8 billion in debt, cancelling almost 1 million personal credit card accounts. Our two major airlines are battling it out in the sky in a bid to lure more Australians to book their next holiday with them. Virgin and Qantas now both offering dueling status match promotions for their frequent flyers programs. Well, it is the largest and most lucrative battleground in the airline wars. The frequent flyer or loyalty programs is where both the major Australian airlines have really put their focus when it comes to getting people back in the sky. Last week we saw Qantas make their pitch for Virgin's frequent flyers. This week we see Virgin make a counter offer, one that they say is more lucrative and better for those customers. The overall winner should be consumers. Here is Dean Chadwick from Virgin Velocity. They've been very loyal to us in the past um, and as we've come out of administration we expect the, uh, the loyalty is still there with our uh, most valuable members. We continue to make sure that we deliver on the product and the experience to those members and they reward us by flying with us. Both companies come with catches and you should look to the websites where they can further extrapolate on exactly what those details are. However, the crux is if you are a gold or platinum level frequent flyer of either airline, now is the opportunity to jump across, try out the other and get some of the bonuses that comes with that. We'll have more details. Nine News tonight at six. Time for the forecast now with Shirley Biggs live from Duncraig. 
Thanks, Mon. Well, if you thought it was warm today, get ready for a summer scorcher, which is set to hit tomorrow. Some suburbs will be uh, nearing 40 degrees, even heading over that 40 degree mark today. But for now, though, we had some easterly winds come through today and we reached a top of 33 degrees late this afternoon. We do have a balmy summer's night ahead. It's still lingering around 30 at the moment and will remain in the high 20s well after dinner time. Now, the sudden heat spell is caused by a mass of hot air, which has been building in the state's north at the moment. It will filter down a trough along the west coast tomorrow, but a very active monsoon in the tropics will stop the mercury from climbing further this week, uh, closer to Perth, and we will see a bit of increased humidity. Now, tomorrow we'll wake to a low of 20 degrees. Another hot breeze coming from inland will send the mercury soaring to 39 degrees mid to late afternoon. This will be the peak of the week's heat. There's a chance that we'll see storms around the hills in the afternoon, but our nights are staying quite warm. It's going to start feeling a bit sticky. 33 and humid on Wednesday. Storms about the hills again. 31 the top on Friday. It is cooling off over the weekend though. Some patchy cloud about and top temperatures in the mid 20s. Now Mon the Christmas lights are up and we've got some beautiful balmy nights ahead of us. So jump on to Synergy Christmas Lights Trail and uh, check out where you can see the, the lights closer <laughs> to your neighbourhood. But we're having a great time here in Duncraig and I'll show you them uh, after dark at six o'clock. Thanks Sherry. It's always fun going for a drive with a family and checking out all the Christmas lights and that is the news this hour. Now it is time for Nine News at Six with Michael Thompson coming to you live right now. Tonight borders down. Free travel about to resume with New South Wales and Victoria and the first plane arrives in the morning. Plus a Covid scare off Quinana right now a ship in lockdown. The tragic final message 